have I got a treat for you today. It's a fairy tale. Once upon a time in a far off land, there was a beautiful maiden. And this maiden, she had, um, she wore the beautiful clothes and all that sort of stuff. And she was intelligent. She was hard working. She was good at sports. She could ride horses, use the sword, all that, all that sort of stuff. Which may be, you know, uh, might have um, put a few guys off in her life, you know, that came along as suitors. And, and, well, maybe it didn't, or maybe it was just her, because she was so good at what she did, because she was well-educated. She went to university, and she, she knew how to live a life, and she lived a fairly happy sort of life. And then, not that many years ago, she decided that she would, she would spend a bit of time looking into other areas of her life, things like her spirituality. And so she went and, and delved into one or two little areas of her life. And, well, it worked okay for her. And then a big dark cloud came over. And it was in the form of... Um, it, it, like a big dark energy came over. And it, it plunged her into darkness. Because the help she received wasn't wasn't in high integrity type help. It was someone who was just after the money and doing the wrong thing by her and this sort of stuff. And she would, the maiden being a little bit as beautiful she is and, and this sort of stuff, and being as, she was a little bit gullible maybe, didn't really matter. Anyway, she delved into this and she came out the other side not that well. She just found that life was pretty tough. And uh, she admits today, even, that when we, when we talk to her, that um, she thinks she went into some mental, she had some mental problems. Anyway, she lived her life fairly, fairly carefully and, and this sort of stuff. And then had a lonely life and worked, worked, worked hard and uh, saved her money and lived in her castle, um, which was a, like a borrowed castle. But it... it, it it was a castle, and she enjoyed her life, and she went about her life as, as normal. And occasionally, she would seek a little bit of help from here and a little bit of help from there. But generally, she went to work each day, and she just had a, had a, a, a fairly meaningful life. Although, deep down, there was something missing. And that was, she wanted a knight. She wanted a knight in shining armour to ride up pick her up, put her on the back of his white steed, slay the dragon, and go off. the two of them ride off into the sunset um, to his castle, and they'd, they'd be happily ever after. And she kind of thought that in the back of her mind, that, that that's the way it could be. And to the most part, she just kept that way of thinking, and it was, it was pretty good. And it didn't worry her that much that, you know, no one came along until someone did come along. <clears throat> a special friend came along and she spent some time with this special friend. And there she was um, um, going out and enjoying herself. And the one thing that the special friend introduced her to was the freedom of being out and, uh, in, in the world. He introduced her, you know, they play sport together, which she usually won. They play games together, which she usually won. And various things like that. And it was, it was a good relationship and this sort of stuff. And at around about the time she met this special surf, this special person, she decided that she needed to go a little bit further with the spiritual stuff that she was doing and other areas in life. So she called on the special mentor person. She called him up. She'd known him. She'd known him because she, this, was, this was the person that she'd been to see a couple of times before. And he was offering something new. So she went along and, lo and behold, every once a week she knocks on his door. He lets her in. They have a cup of tea. And they sit down and they discuss her life. And he very, very gently sort of plays her along and, and offers some things, some habits that she might not have changed here, a little thing there, 
and she does, and he does it in a very, very subtle and beautiful and empowering way. And she was taking this on very, 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 very easily. You know, she thinks this is wonderful. I'm, I'm liking this. It, it agreed with her. And so, things are going along, and she would come and tell stories about the special man in her life, the special guy, and she felt that the relationship just wasn't progressing. So the special mentor or coach decided to test her and he said to her, what you need to do, my maiden, is you need to go out and you need to do something outrageous. Something outrageous like touch him, embrace him, something like that. Well, <gasps> she was horrified. She was absolutely horrified. She, I couldn't do that. So... There was test number one for the maiden. She didn't like. She, she decided, well, gonna, if this is what this uh, this special mentor coach is going to do, oh, I'm a bit careful. I'm going to be a bit careful here. Anyway, he didn't he didn't test her on it too much. He just kept up the momentum, and very very slowly this relationship kept on going, and it's just started to wane a little bit. And she got a little bit worried. <sighs> Poor thing, she got very worried actually that. Uh, what's going on? Anyway, the mentor tested her a bit more and he said, well, you just think about what's happening. This special person that you met, what did he do? He got you out and about. You don't spend time at home so much. Guess what? You're not lonely anymore. And she said, yes, that's true. So there was a good side to this. There's a fantastic side to it. So she thought, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I agree. So she admitted and she was grateful for this special person that the one thing that he introduced her to was the fact that he got her out of her loneliness by getting her to do things. It's terrific. So, one particular evening, not that long ago, she knocked on the, the, coach, the mentor coach's door and said, and told her this story about how the relationship was waning. So the coach mentor said, I have another challenge. It's a special challenge for you. And so he said to her, what I want you to do, I want you, well, you don't have to, but I want you to get on the special internet, the special internet, and what I want you to do is go onto one of those dating sites. She went, oh, no, I've done that before. And there's no way, no, and I'm going to do that again. And he said, well, all you need to do is put a profile up and gently, don't necessarily have to pay for it or anything like that. Go on to one of the reputable ones and see what happens. And he sent her away. A week later, knock on the door, she came in, big grin on her face. She said, something's happened. I said, He's, and, 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 the, uh, and the mentor said, Oh, that's good. Tell me more. Well, I've had some interaction um, with a special knight, a special person. We'll call him Jack. And so, well, and Jack is, what does Jack do? And all this sort of stuff. Well, Jack is away a lot of the time and he plants things. He does things and plants beans and seeds and things around. Well, okay, that's, that's terrific. And so... We didn't know much about Jack. She just knew his name and that's all. And a week went past. Love and knocked on the door and she comes in and they talk about some stuff. And, well, it turns out that Jack had actually made a move. He had pursued her. He had ridden up on his horse. Met her. She would ridden her horse to the special tavern bit of a rough tavern, but the special tavern. She knotted her horse there. He knotted her his horse. And the tavern was very noisy. It wasn't a place to, to have a meaningful relationship. So he suggested, why don't we go back to her place, uh, to his place? And she said, why not? And the next thing, he said, well, hop on the back of my horse. And she said, why not? Her horse is still tethered there back of her horse, is his horse, and away they went. Spent time and they talked. And he was interesting. He was engaging. And he was an interesting person. He wanted to know lots about her. And she and the maiden was just a little bit standoffish saying things like, well, I 
I have some fears, I need to do this slowly and I don't want to do too much. And so, that was okay for Jack. He, at the end of the evening, put it back on the horse, hopped on his horse, put it on the back of the horse, took it back to her horse at the tavern. She hopped on the horse and went home. And she thought about it and she thought, yeah, Jack's a nice person. That wasn't enough for Jack. Jack was going to pursue her more. He's going to send pigeons. He's going to have people knock on the door, giving him little notes. He was going to um, have special riders come along and give her letters and things about how he felt, all this sort of stuff. Well, this is a little overwhelming for our maiden. She thought, this is very special. I kind of like this. This is really good. And so the maiden took it all in. And, and only a couple of days later, would you like to go out? So they did. And they had a wonderful time. They danced all night. There were no slippers involved, but they danced all night and they had a wonderful time. And Jack was the perfect gentleman and he talked to her and he just gave her the time and this sort of stuff. And of course, the next day, Jack had to go away and plant some beans. And he went away. He was going to go away for quite a while. That didn't stop Jack, though. Jack kept up. All of the, the, the pigeons kept on coming. The, the couriers kept on coming. The messages kept on coming. And all the little things kept on coming. And the messages themselves changed. And even our maiden, when she sent the pigeon back, the messages changed. It wasn't one of them. It weren't messages of fear anymore, of trepidation. There were messages of, I'm finding this interesting. I'm liking what's going on. I like you. And so it just happened that ooh, about a week went past and then the mentor coach was at home, knock on the door again, and in she walked. And the mentor noticed there was something different about her. There was a glow, a special energy glow. This was the girl in love. The maiden was in love. She was really quite beautiful. And so they sat down and they talked about it. And the maiden opened her heart and she said, I have never been in a place like this before. She said, and I like it. And she said, there is no fear. I don't know why I hopped on the horse to go back to Jack's place. It just happened. Anyway, the, the mentor and coach said, well, maybe it's because... Your intuition is working. The inner gut feeling is working. She said, that's it. She said, I have no fear. You help me, coach mentor. And the coach mentor said, no, 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 no. I didn't do anything. You did it yourself. It's your stuff. You did it yourself. And so the mentor just let her go and the way she went. And he got, then there's another week, went past and knocked on the door. And she's even glowing more. And it turns out, the story continues. The latest little snippet is that it looks like the maiden and Jack might live in the same castle together when Jack gets back from planting his seeds, his beans. So that's your story. It's a beautiful story. It's a coaching and a mentor story. A little bit different than normal. So that's your lot for the week. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.